psychedelics like psilocybin containing mushrooms have a long history of use from indigenous medicines and traditions to, you know, we hear a lot about cultural movements in the 1960s, but, you know, it's only now that we're doing the first study of um, psilocybin in bipolar depression. Why does it feel like we're only recently hearing about its potential to treat mental health symptoms? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's a couple of major factors that are influencing that. I think one is that unfortunately, you know, Western medicine is very slow to pick up on advances in indigenous medicines and traditions, and there's a bias there. I think that's one major piece for sure. Um, And then interestingly, there was a fair amount of research in this area working with a number of clinical populations in the 1950s and 60s, and I think with the countercultural movement later, um, and sort of the government reaction with uh, classifying these substances as Schedule One drugs, drugs that don't have uh, medical use, um, ended up really shutting down this this investigation up until the last couple of well, like last couple of decades essentially, um, and that's just been starting to ramp up. And now it it really is the case that we're really looking more carefully to see how it treats mental health symptoms. And um, yeah, so I think that's a it's a loss, but I think we're trying to catch up and see what what can work here. Yeah, it really feels like we're in for an exciting couple of years of um, accelerated developments in this area. You know, I think myself and other viewers have read a lot in the news lately about psilocybin for depression and trauma. Um, We haven't seen much specifically looking into bipolar disorder. Um, Can you tell me anything about why that is? Yeah, I think that there's some good reason to be cautious with um, psilocybin and psychedelics in bipolar disorder. And I think a lot of this is anecdotal. There's not a, a, a ton of research that indicates, oh, this is clearly a problem. But the anecdotal evidence, certainly when you think about when people take a psychedelic substance, one of the things that often happens is sleep disruption. And so sleep disruption can be certainly problematic in mania. Um, and also um, symptoms of, of the substance themselves often look like hypomania. And so I think the concerns there are we should be careful about giving a substance that could activate uh, a manic episode for somebody with bipolar disorder. I think the other piece about it is that because it's a powerful uh, serotonergic agent, we know that with some substances, some SSRIs, there's good evidence that you, in the, within the population of people with bipolar disorder, that the serotonergic agents might um, activate a manic episode. Um, and so um, that's the that's the concern here, I think, that how it comes together, but it's not really well understood, I guess. 